The sandy beach, the small cafe, the ferry ride across the bay, the sweet romantic words you say. I can't stop thinking of you. The songs we sang, all out of tune. Your hand in mine, your soft perfume. That very special afternoon. I can't stop thinking of you. Baby, maybe I'm dreaming. Maybe, baby, I'm dreaming. Well, my next guest is one of the finest guitar players in the world. She has performed for world leaders and kings and queens. She has recorded 23 albums and received numerous awards, including five Junos. It is a pleasure and honor to have Leona Boyd here in the studio with me today. Well, Leona, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a lovely introduction. It's so nice having you here. You. Of course, I grew up uh, with your music and uh, watching you on television and, and uh, watching you. you in action playing the guitar. So for me, I'm thrilled to have you here today. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's always lovely, lovely to hear you know, people that grew up, like maybe my Christmas album or something that was part of their life, and they come and see me after concerts and tell me the stories, so it's, it's touching. Now, you um, have lived in, in a number of places around the world, yes. and now you're back in Toronto. Yes, yes. You're living here 20 in years later, I moved back. And what brought you back to Toronto? Well, my father got sick, and eventually we lost him, so that was uh, very sad. But I also realized that I had a nostalgic connection with Canada, and I, I missed a lot of elements, of course, my, my mother and my sister. but. Um, so, so many things, you know, I was in, uh, in Muskoka the last two summers and just thought, oh, I'd forgotten how beautiful it is here. And just because I spent basically my, my high school years here, my university here, I have a lot of connections and that's important as you get older, you, um, you want to reestablish that. And I wanted to give back to my country too. I wanted to uh, somehow write some meaningful songs about Canada. Well, it really wasn't my intention originally when I came back, but one led to another led to another. And I realized that Canada, as, as musicians, we don't celebrate our country enough. Stomping Tom Connors, Connors always used to say, you know, write about Canada, but very few people have. So, uh, you know, I did a tribute to the Maritimes. I did something for Quebec. I did, of course, my Canadian patriotic song, Canada, My Canada. I did something called Spirit of the Canadian Northlands. Um, and they just came to me kind of naturally. It took almost two years, though, to get it all together. And I'm really very proud of this album that, uh, that celebrates all the good things that Canada has. And, and the, the beauty, too. I had a song for the Arctic, a song about the little towns that I played in. And uh, I have just so many stories and, you know, about the experience that I've had. And no Canada, pretty much uh, like the back of my hand, from the little tiny fishing villages to the Arctic to the to the British Columbia snowbound little towns where I, where I used to tour back in the 70s. <laughs> and so you just, I mean, you really did just uh, release this album, mm -hmm. um, and you called yes. it The Return to Canada with Love. Yes, and I sat in a canoe with my guitar, what's more Canadian, right? <laughs> yeah, to the cover. And so one of the songs uh, on the album is Canada My Canada. Yes. Patriotic and, song. And it's, it's an important one because you pulled together uh, a, a huge team yes, of Canadian how, talent. I don't know how I did it, actually, because my idea was something like, tears are not enough, you know, we are the world, but how do you do that without a really heavy duty manager like, <laughs> like you know, Brian Adams had? Um, but one by one, I, I asked Jen Arden, would you sing a line for me? She said, yeah, sure. And then I asked uh, Dan Hill, he said, yes. Um, what have I got? John McDermott, uh, Mark Masry, little Maria Aragon, who uh, Lady Gaga discovered. She's just a kid, but she's fantastic. Um, Danny, Danny and, Lenoir? Uh, Daniel Lavoie, he, he sings on my tribute to Quebec. And, um, and, and um, who else? Oh, Serena Ryder. She's a you know, big star now and just real sweetheart. She came into the studio with the manager and I said, I'm going to give you the high notes to sing here. <laughs> She was wonderful. And then I um, also recorded with a whole choir. The Etobicoke School for the Arts Choir joined me. And, and that's always thrilling to play with a, a 
choir behind me, because it's a new experience for me, really. But in the last few months, I have performed a few times, and in Ottawa, too, with the whole children's chorus behind me. And then I thought, well, who can I get to sing the opening line with me? I'd already had um, Robert P. Long, who's the voice of the Phantom, and uh, Jean Valjean from Les Miserables. But I wanted somebody really, really special to join the opening line. And I got Chris Hadfield. And he said, oh, Leon, I've been a fan of yours. <laughs> I love your guitar playing. So he's actually in two lines and um, a true Canadian hero. And we got the hockey team that beat the Russians in 72. That I, I went with my uh, producer and we recorded all the old guys <laughs> singing the chorus. I had the words up on a big cardboard so they could remember the words. So in pulling this project together, I mean, it sounds like it would, it, it must have been um, oh, quite, three quite a, up three years to pull. No, two. Oh, two, two years altogether, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, and, and I did it really without a manager. I have a wonderful woman manager now, um, Catherine McBride, or Cat. I was always wanting a cat. I didn't know she'd be a woman. <laughs> but anyway, she, uh, she ended up doing, uh, you know, she does my, my bookings and helps a lot. But this is before I'd even met her, so I basically single-handedly got all these different people together and worked with a wonderful genius of a producer who lives here in Toronto, Peter Bond, who had, had produced uh, the album I did before called Seven Journeys, Music for the Soul and the Imagination. Um, so I knew, that was another reason I guess I came back to Canada, because I knew some of the musicians here, I knew this, this producer would, would be the one to do this patriotic song, which is how it all started. And why I wanted to do that is I realized that um, Canada doesn't really have a song that all Canadians know other than the anthem. Because I was with my former husband in Berlin once, and every country had to, s every like, group of people from the country had to sing a song, and we Canadians completely embarrassed ourselves. <laughs> we did Alouette, and it, it was not pretty. So I, I sort of feel this is my gift to Canada. I've come back. Uh, yeah, as you say, I had to reinvent myself completely because I never sang in my life, you know. I was the one that was thrown out of the choir when I was eight and told I, w I couldn't sing, so I never thought I would be able to sing. And now, the Good to Know Minute. It's time for my Good to Know Minute, and I know yes. you've got a great success tip. The secret to my career and life is just perseverance, not giving up because Lord knows I've had enough. <laughs> People say, you'll never do that. <laughs> you know, even parents can say that. Oh, you'll never do that, Leona. Um, you'll never sing. You will, I, I had um, a guitar critic, I remember, who was very renowned in London, say, like, as a woman, you just, you're just not going to make it in the guitar world because it's a man's world, and unless you can sight read everything by age 14, you know, you'll never make it. And then someone else said, unless you've got a lot of money behind you, you'll never be able to... Um, promote the albums, or another one said, you, you can't go and sign with CBS Records in New York, you know, they, they've got other much more renowned guitarists, yet I did it, you know, I did it and I sold millions of albums, and it really was a male-dominated world, the guitar world, so, yeah, just don't give up, don't give up, um, lots of times I've been told I can't do it, but I've done it, so, even with this album, I did it and I sang, so. Well, that's good to know, and thanks for that. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, more on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay with us. And now for more Extraordinary Women. I had the pleasure of um, attending your concert uh, in Huntsville, and it was lovely. Thank you and so much. And your voice uh, is so sweet. And, and as you said, this is something that's relatively new. It uh, is. I mean, you. as you can see, I don't really have a trained voice. I still sound like an English school kid, I think, sometimes. But, um, you know, with good miking and everything, you can, I somehow I have all these stories to tell, and I, I love it. That's the most important thing. I really enjoy singing. And I've simplified my guitar technique. Um, Are you, but you've been forced to do this. Yes, I mean, yes. Uh, this right. has been, um, I mean, you've, something has happened within your, your hands. It's actually not in my hands. My hands are always completely 100% perfect. Um, what happens if musicians play too much, they can get something called focal dystonia, musicians' focal right. dystonia, yeah. and it's the message between the brain and the fingers um, because you basically do billions of the same repetitive notes. So the hands are totally fine, but the message isn't getting right. And they told me I'd never play guitar again. I mean, it's, it didn't affect any other part of my body. Just basically, this finger wouldn't behave, so all the alignment was out. But and for any other motion, the hands are fine. It's just that 
particular arpeggios and tremolo. So I simplified my technique. For a while I worked with a pick, then I, I changed my technique around a little bit. And now I think this is the biggest blessing in my life. Isn't that funny? Sometimes you think it's such a tragedy, <laughs> something bad's happened to you. I was able to turn it around and make it uh, be the kind of, open up a whole new chapter called singing and songwriting, which I never would have done. I'd still be playing, you know, Malaganya and some of my classical pieces and playing with orchestra, which is pretty nerve wracking. When you're playing in front of symphony orchestra and the conductor's waiting and, you know, it's, I used to get quite nervous before orchestras, but now I get on the stage, I just love it because I'm telling my story. You know, I know I'm not a perfect singer, I'm no Celine Dion, but the people really appreciate it. And uh, I think I actually like hearing my voice now, so that is totally amazing to me. There's a, like pinching myself, wow, I am singing something I never thought. I was the kid that would literally lip sync happy birthday, that's how bad it was. Nobody in my family sang. So yeah, I think especially um, for women, we have to reinvent ourselves. We, we can't just rest on our laurels or, um, and if something like this happens, you know, and, and, and you know, I was forced to, but now I think, oh, wow, thank God I was because, it, I mean, it was hard. I, I left my marriage, I left a whole luxurious life I had in Beverly Hills, and, you know, there were frustrating times, too. The music business is not easy, and I'm, I'm not in my 20s anymore, um, so sometimes I think, oh, <laughs> it used to be so easy. But actually, it really wasn't. It was always a bit of a struggle. If you read my autobiography, there were a lot of up and downs. And um, classical guitar was not really known to the general public when I started. But through making some good decisions, I managed to get on The Tonight Show three times and do all kinds of you know, amazing things, touring with Gordon Lightfoot. All that helped m enable me to introduce a lot of people around the world to classical guitar and gave me adventures like you wouldn't believe. I mean, my guitar's taken me on so many crazy adventures. And If you would like to be a guest on Extraordinary Women TV, visit our website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner or on Facebook at Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. Join us next time for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV.